Hi, it's Dustin from Atheist Nomads again. I'm doing another personal log. It is August 22, 2016, and it's a little bit before noon. So I've gotten quite a bit of, of supportive feedback. You know, one message I got is from someone named Tom. I don't know the different emotions you must be going through. However, I know how I might feel in such a situation. I admire your strength and courage. From... Yeah, let me scroll down. Janelle, this was directly in response to yesterday's personal log. Thanks for sharing a difficult but honorable action. All the best. I hope you find the information and closure you need. From Cheryl, my aunt, Dustin, I'm so proud of you and so thankful for Lauren. Hugs to you and your family. Uh, by email, I got from the Flying Skeptic. I just uh, listened to your personal log number one. I'm at a bit of a loss for words, so I'll just say thanks for sharing. It is rare that we get access to people's emotional journey. Tip of the cap for your bravery. Best of luck in the coming days. And all of this support, it really means a lot. It's it's pretty incredible. Uh, the mix of emotions is weird. I am happy to try to share, but I... Beyond what I explained yesterday, I don't think I really understand them myself. Uh, at this point, it's more... It's kind of moved towards just curiosity. Uh, really curious about what's the missing information. And because I have that to focus on, it's a lot easier to think instead of feel... And since I'm hitting some dead ends, that might shift. So, well, let's get to the dead ends. I went to the hospital where he died and filled out the paperwork for medical records. That's going to take two to three weeks. That's really disappointing. <laughs> so, uh, that's not a dead end. It's just a stop and wait. I contacted medical records of the nursing home that he was at between his hospital stays, and they told me that since I wasn't listed on his account, that they can't give me anything at all. So, okay, dead end there. I tried Los Angeles County Mental Health and got another dead end. What I did find in the process is that they serve more than a quarter million people per year. We're talking a department that serves more people than the population of the city of Boise. Each year. That is absolutely incredible. So what it comes down to is I am severely disadvantaged while trying to find a needle in a haystack. He's one mentally ill person out of countless others in one of the largest cities in America. Second largest city in America. And I have the disadvantage that since he disappeared, he apparently his family was dead to him, so he didn't list us on anything, or he forgot, or his condition had deteriorated such that, yeah, he didn't remember us. So okay, nothing there to work with. And the disadvantage from that being that a lot of this information I'd need a court order to get realistically. And that's very much not likely. Uh, I did do a public record search. It cost me uh, about $35. Well worth it. Um, unfortunately... All the information I was able to get from that was two addresses. At least for new information. It also had his addresses in Vail in Ontario and Oregon before he moved down here, but we know about his life then. What we don't know is his life after he moved to L.A. So I have one address from April 1st to April 30, 1996, and another one from May 1, 1996 to November 30, 2002. So... That's at least a little piece of the puzzle to fill in a little bit of the the gap of his his life narrative. 
at least being able to say with reasonable assurance he wasn't homeless in that time period. But, okay, 2002 to 2016. Or if we, we go ahead and assume that he was in a mental health institution prior to his first hospitalization uh, for the two years prior to that, we've still got a, there's a 12-year gap. And I haven't been able to figure out what mental health facility he was in. It's frustrating. It's roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. Uh, one source of information I haven't really explored yet is what I could get from Social Security since he was on on disability. Um, and they do have me on file as his dependent. Uh, I'm not really planning on exploring that one until I have the death certificate and I go in and take that to them and start the, the paperwork to get the back payment uh, paid out. But, yeah, roadblocks, it's it's disappointing. That's really all, all I have to say for now. Uh, at this point, it's not looking like there's much point in staying in, in L.A. past today. Uh, we're going to head down to the Monica, Santa Monica Pier for lunch. Uh, this evening, I'm going to meet up with Ryan Bell at the brewery he works at. Uh, Ryan was a... He's been a guest on the podcast twice now and does the uh, Life After God podcast. And uh, it'll, it'll be nice to see him face to face, have some good beer. But yeah, for now, that's all I've got. Okay, it's 4.45 p.m. now. Uh, since I recorded a bit earlier, we went to the Santa Monica Pier for lunch and just some, some relaxation. It was nice to get a break from the search and everything we've been doing while we're here and also gave me some time to reflect on some of it. One thing in, in particular, and some of this was fueled by a conversation with family, is the fact that he, by choosing not to list family on any of his documentation demonstrates that he doesn't want us to know what's been going on. He, for whatever reason, chose to leave. He's been making it difficult. The only thing that I think I have really have a good justifiable grounds to say, yes, I have a right to this information is like the high level view of, of his medical history because of the fact that is, you know, that's that's an important part of my own family medical history. As far as the rest of what's gone on in his life in the last 20 year, years, that would be nice to know. It would satisfy some personal curiosity, but he should have the right to that privacy. I'm starting to think. So I'm not sure how much more I actually want to dig. I know he's died. That's more than I ever thought I was going to know. And that, especially with making the trip down to L.A. and trying, uh, making a, a pretty good effort at trying, I think I have, I think I've found what I need for closure. Uh, but, yeah, it was, moving from that to the fun we were having, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh Santa Monica Pier was was a, a very nice diversion. The waves were beautiful. The the site was beautiful. There were beautiful people having fun all over the place. We ran into some friends from Boise and had margaritas and caught tons and tons of Pokemon. Oh man, there were so many Pokemon. It was nuts. All over the pier, there are Poke stops, and every single one was a lure. Had a lure the entire time. We even attacked a gym and defeated it, I think, three times because somebody else kept taking it. It was it was crazy. Uh, Lauren, do you have any uh, thoughts on that? It was super awesome. Super uh, fun, relaxing. It was nice to get our mind off of things. And the shrimp poor boy was delicious. 
<laughs> yeah, and I had fish and chips. No, they were. They, they, it wasn't the best fish and chips I've had, but but pretty damn good. And uh, Lauren, as far as this whole uh, possibly uh, ill-conceived adventure, uh, what would you say your over- overall impressions are so far? Well, so far it's been a great adventure. Um, that's for sure. Uh, what I don't. What I can't get over is the fact that everybody's saying, oh, Lauren, you've been so supportive. Oh, you're such a good... No, I've been doing exactly what a very selfish person would do, and that's get a vacation to L.A. to discover some of Dustin's family background. Um, yes, I suppose I have been very supportive in the fact that I've been rubbing his shoulders and telling him it's all going to be okay and that kind of thing, but... Uh, yeah, a little bit of guilt there. I'm actually having a lot of fun. So, <laughs> sorry, Dustin. Yeah, you know, Lord, you have been very supportive just by being here. Yeah, that's the, the the bar is pretty low when it comes to stuff like this because you know you you've never met the man, and so yeah, what what more is there for you to do than than to just be along for the 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 journey with me? And it's it's very similar to the times when I've had friends or boyfriends that were adopted who didn't know anything about their biological parents. Um, some of them really wanted to kind of dig in there and see what was going on. But some of those people made that decision not wanting to have that life come back to them. And uh, I have a feeling that, that your your father just chose to kind of keep it in the dark. For a reason, and I think it is more respectful to go ahead and kind of let that go. We will learn everything we can medical, medically wise, because that's important. That's he doesn't have a choice in that, but he does have a choice in us digging around looking for jobs, associates, apartments, that kind of thing. You know, and realistically, really, the one of the big questions, other than the medical side, that we've all been curious about is is. Whether or not he's had housing the entire time, it is very common for people with with uh, severe mental illness to eventually uh, end up homeless. Uh, that's a, a fear some of my siblings have had. With the information I found today, I know that at least the f- most of the first you know, ten years or so that he was here, he had housing, but. I can't say for certain anything beyond that, but also, you know, he never, Chuck, my brother, did attempt to make contact once, and, and he ignored that, so, yeah, that that was, that was our father's choice, so, Lauren, do you have any other thoughts? Um, not really, just that you're doing a fantastic job, and thanks for bringing me on this awesome adventure, and, uh, the next couple months is going to be very interesting. <laughs> yeah, because even when we get back to Boise, it's, it's not over. There's, there'll still be more things to... Paperwork. <laughs> not much paperwork, but there, there'll still be a little bit more. Uh, thank you, and for, for listening, and, uh... Yeah, email me at Dustin at AtheistNomads.com if you have any questions or comments. Talk to you later.